I'm Mike Davis, and Judy Hunnicke and myself are chimers here at the Mother Church. We're in what we call the practice room for the chimes at the moment. I play uh, Sunday afternoons uh, starting at 4.30. That's before the 5 o'clock service on Sundays, and then I also play um, Wednesday evenings before the testimony meeting. I practice uh, every time before I play. I generally play on Sunday mornings. Even though the keyboard looks exactly the same as the keyboard that you're going to see upstairs, the sound is vastly different. I really prefer not to have the entire city of Boston <laughs> hearing me practice, so this is uh, much better. We're going to go up into the tower. We're going to go up a spiral staircase that will take us by certain levels here in the original edifice of the Mother Church, and then we'll come out a trap door, and then we'll go into a little room, and that's where we play. We're now at the Rio Bell console, which is up at the very top of the original tower, and we're only a few feet below the actual bells themselves, so the sound here is quite loud. This set of bells is called a chime. This chime was installed in 1984 with 18 bells. We have room for six more bells, and with six more bells, we would be a carillon. It's a little different upstairs here than it is downstairs, because here we're physically moving a clapper that gets progressively heavier the lower the note. So the clapper here is much larger than for this note. There's a series of metal cables that attaches from this keyboard up to the bell clapper itself. And also these levers are arranged in the same way that uh, keys are on a piano keyboard. Um, these levers would correspond with the uh, white keys on a piano keyboard and these levers with the black keys. Because you only have 18 notes to deal with, sometimes the hymn, as it is written in the Christian Science Hymnal, is either too low or too high for us to play. So we have to do what's called transposition and get the piece of music into a range of notes that fits this set of bells. And that's what we've done for virtually all the hymns in the Christian Science Hymnal over the years. These bells were installed in 1984, and uh, for many years prior to that, there had been no chimes at all in this tower. In Mary Baker Eddy's time, there was a set of tubular bells in here. They kept the bells going Mrs. Eddy's time all night long and uh, disturbed the sleep of people in the neighborhood. <laughs> so she asked the church to stop doing that because she, she felt that Christian science here was, was here to help people, not to deprive them of their sleep. So. Yeah, and I believe they were going off every 15 minutes as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read a few excerpts from a letter that Mary Baker Eddy wrote to the Christian Science Board of Directors in July of 1903. Uh, apparently on this day, July 22nd, the bells throughout Boston were being played to commemorate the occasion of Pope Leo's decease. And Mrs. Eddy was asked a little bit too late if uh, she would permit this to happen. She ended up writing a letter, this letter to the directors, and she says, why did you not telegraph or phone me as to ringing the bell of our church when other churches rang theirs on the occasion of Pope Leo's decease. These lost opportunities never return with their full power to do good. She also says, I hold to loving all mankind and improving the chance to show this. And I think those are ideas that we can still use today in terms of our bell playing. Well, I think that um it shows her love for all mankind and that um, every aspect of our church activities here can be used to express that love. I really enjoy it a lot. It's a nice musical outlet for me and also I think it's something that really contributes to the community here and is really inspiring. People sometimes develop an interest in coming into the church even because they've heard the bells. And uh, I think it, the bells can really lift people's spirits who hear them. 
I often think about the fact that thousands of people walk through the Christian Science Plaza every year and think about how many of those thousands are touched in a way by the Mother Church, by the music that they're hearing coming out of this tower.